Well, we are back with our friend Jay Wilkinson, uh, the son of Bud Wilkinson. We've been talking about some of his and his father's political uh, aspirations and what they did here Exploits. in Oklahoma. But also, uh, Jay was a terrific football player. And if you didn't join us in the first segment, his dad kind of wanted him to go out and his mother too to make his own identity. He went to Duke as a running back. And in 1963, look at the All-American team he was on here. Look at some of the names here. You see uh, Jay down uh, down towards the bottom here, right about uh, there. there yeah. But Dick Buckus is on his Roger Stallback. Roger Stallback. Gail, Gail Sayers. Carl Eller. Carl Carl Heller, Heller, who was one of the Purple People leaders yeah. at uh, Minnesota. Dick yeah. Buckus. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Buckus. Yeah. Unbelievable. I mean, well, well, and you slide it. I'm going to try to slide this book. Slide it a little bit. See, Richard Nixon. Oh, there, there he is. There's Jay in the, in the Oval Office with Richard Nixon. Right. Isn't that right. something? <laughs> and he didn't know he was being recorded at that. <laughs> yeah, I was all recorded. That's right. Now, we, we want to talk more. Oral history. We want to talk more about this book because uh, uh, it's, I think for a lot of people who read this, it's going to be kind of an eye-opener about the icon in Oklahoma football, Bud Wilkinson, isn't it? Right. Yeah, I think so, Kevin. Uh, as we've talked about, I was uh, I was a lonesome, homesick young man at Duke, and uh, Dad uh, sent me letters on a, as Kirk said, a, a very consistent basis, as did my mom, but just filled with a lot of warmth, love, encouragement, and support, and they were very meaningful to me, helped me with my self-confidence at the time, and uh, he was very busy, so his taking time to write my brother Pat and me meant an awful lot to us, and I thought that it would be worthwhile to share share the letters in hopes that it might inspire and motivate others to put in writing their feelings of love and care for those that are close to them. Yeah. It's kind of a lost art right now, the, yeah. the art of writing a letter because everything's email. And I just want to mention this real quick, Mike and uh, uh, Kirk, because the foreword is by legendary basketball yeah. coach at Duke, Mike Krzyzewski. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you guys meet? Well, I've known Coach Krzyzewski for many years. Uh, uh, I was inducted into the Duke Sports Hall of Fame many years ago, and so I go back to that every year. And of course, Coach K has been part of that. But it was very kind of him to do it as busy as he is and he really captured the essence he of the did. importance yeah. of the letter yeah. so I really appreciate it. Jay it's it's not easy to be the son of a famous man. True, as you know. What would you say about that? Well, I think it's true, uh, Kirk. As I used to say, though, I think the advantages uh, always outweigh the disadvantages. But you know, it's like assets and liabilities. There's both. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think there's a little bit more pressure, uh, higher expectations, maybe, mm -hmm. on the children. But did you uh, put more expectations on yourself? Probably did. Uh, living at home with our mom and dad, the only thing that was different, different in our household from others was that we had a, a famous father. Yeah. Yeah. But other than that, everything was very much the same. Hey, hey, and I've, Excuse me. Mark. No, no, excuse me, but, but, but following up on Kurt's question. So, your other book, mm -hmm. The Intimate Portrait True. of Your Dad, Yes. It, you said in the preface that it was all about what made Bud Wilkinson tick. I tried, Mike. So take that runaway. What did make that famous man, your father, that great coach, tick, so to speak? Well, uh, in, in, the, in the first book, Mike, it was more biographical, and I right. tried to talk about the many things other than coaching that Dad did, such as uh, 20 years on television, did a chapter on that. As you know, he headed up President Kennedy's fiscal fitness department, mm -hmm. did a mm -hmm. chapter on that. He was close to Richard Nixon. Uh, yeah. He was in business. So I tried to capture all the different things that he did, and I think what made him tick was uh, he, uh, first of all, as you all, he uh, had a, a, a strong desire to be of service to others, mm -hmm. but he knew what was important, such things as preparation, motivation, encouragement, and uh, the will to win, and he treated uh, his football players the same as he treated his sons and other people. Uh, uh, listen uh, to some of the family. testimonials on the back of this book. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to read them. I'm just going to say people who contributed to testimonials about the book. Bill Cosby, George H.W. Bush, Bush 41, Bob Stoop, and of course Barry Switzer. You know, one of the things I appreciate yeah, about yeah. what Coach Switzer did and what Coach Stoops has done right. is they're embracing the tradition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I noticed, I saw you down on the sideline at Notre Dame game. That's right, Kirk. We really believe we should have won that game. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But you were yeah. with Clinton Thomas. That's right. A great Bud Wilkinson All-American. Mm -hmm. But talk about the relationship you're your play, the players had with your dad and, and maybe the relationship you had with some of those players? Well, I think their relationship with my dad was one of uh, uh, respect and I guess that would be the key word I'd use they, they and, and like lo love and affection. Yeah, yeah I think dad, the, yes, dad treated them um, uh, very much uh, the same, I think, as he treated Pat and me, although Bob Timberlake, who was one of the great players in 55 and 56, told me, well, I didn't ever get any letters from your dad like these. <laughs> 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 I, I, I did laugh 
But there's no finer person, as we know, than Clendon Thomas. My goodness. What yeah. a, what Wasn't what a, Clendon the first African-American? No, no, that, that okay. was Prentice Scott. Scott. Prentice Scott. Scott. Yeah, okay. No, no, Clendon, Kevin, uh, played with uh, Tommy McDonald. Yeah. And, and uh, his junior year, Tommy's uh, mm -hmm. senior, Clendon scored 18 touchdowns, and Tommy scored 17 touchdowns. And they were, they that's were, a were, lot in that They day. were playing both that's ways, yeah. and there were two teams. So playing both ways. So, no, it was great. But there were so many great players. Talk about your personal family. Real quick. Mike, our uh, oldest daughter, Kirsten, lives here in Oklahoma City with her husband, David Griffin. He used to work here. That's correct. Yeah. And uh, they have three children, uh, mm -hmm. Grace and Jack and little David. And then uh, daughter number two, Holly, is in New Canaan, Connecticut with her husband, Jim, and three of her sons. Right. Our son, PJ, is in uh, Seattle, Washington with his wife and one little child and a, a, a son and a second son coming. And then our baby, Julie, is in New York City in Brooklyn, 26 years old, and she's single. Such Perfect. a rich life. It is. We're the name grateful. of the book is Dear Jay, Love Dad, Bud Wilkinson's Letters mm -hmm. to His Son. There it is right there. And where can folks pick this up? Oh, I think at any bookstore. At every bookstore. Sure. Okay. Yes, Full circle, I recommend. Okay. Yes, sir. But yeah. they also have them in Barnes & Noble and everywhere else. They do. Yeah. Jay, it was terrific to have Thanks, you on. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you so I, much. I, I enjoy yeah. so much watching your guys' show. You yeah. do such a Thank great you. job. We appreciate That's that. That's a nice thing to say. Thank you, uh, Mike. Well, he's a, a flash pointer. <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. Appreciate that. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this. All right.